Hello, this is our artist lecture for experimental and abstract. Uh, this is going to be something to inspire you uh, to think about different process, processes and how other photographers work. So start, we're going to have Britlin Tracy and their work looks at the residue of human inflicted trauma as performed through entertainment media. So they're taking borrowed imagery of uh, violent scenes depicting hate crimes, and domestic abuse, um, sort of very violent and sort of uh, difficult images and using um, uh, processes to sort of condense them to a singular image, sort of change how it views uh, in, uh, in an image. So we have these photographs that are kind of, well, we have these digital material and think about, so we have a snippet of a scene and each part of the scene um, video is really kind of made up of a lot of photographs uh, in a second. You know, we have 24 frames per second, that'd be 24 images per second and then line it together when you view them fast enough it creates the illusion of video movement. movement. So it's kind of taking that, again, it's probably not taking every 24 frames because that would be really redundant, but sort of sandwiching these images across uh, to kind of create these sort of uh, dreamlike uh, scenes that, uh, and these scenes could be, you know, difficult to watch, uh, but it kind of takes that power of, uh, the, these, you know, strong scenes into something else. So this could be a process that you may look, so this could be appropriate imagery or maybe footage that you've taken and to think, how could you extract frames from uh, media? Very painterly. So you have Carlo van der Rohe. Um, so they were making Polaroid portraits and sort of thinking, so this is like this analog process. And uh, with Polaroid analog, uh, you can really kind of get um, different hues and stuff. So they're thinking about auras uh, that a person would come across. So thinking about that concept of someone's aura and uh, you know, this could be actually really fun if you have synesthesia, because I previously had a student who had synesthesia, which is where um, you, you see colors, like sounds become colors, uh, and uh, they, you know, kind of say, you know, what kind of color certain, certain sounds are, or, uh, you know, I asked what color I was, and they were able to describe that. So this might be something to explore. Um, and these are kind of very soft, again, painterly. The first few ones are very painterly, uh, but, you know, this analog process of these portraits for these auras of, that would make up a person. And, and you can do this with film and have fun with processing, or this could be a digital process. Um, this you may, uh, you know, maybe make a new layer of Photoshop with some painterly, you know, paint some brush, play around with, uh, you know, uh, different opacities or blend modes. Rembrandt Cubayo um, is actually a, a Phoenix artist, uh, one of my good friends. Uh, so they look at glitch culture in media and this sort of like uh, this, you know, ongoing, uh, you know, you see a lot of images and, and how it kind of creates, uh, you know, partial, you know, data representations. It's, it's very great. Uh, so he takes borrowed imagery and he actually uses, um, he actually goes into the files and 
uh, you know, because these photographs are all kind of code, zeros and ones, and he pulls them up and he glitches them, saves them, glitches the photograph, saves it, and it kind of degrades this photograph um, into really thinking about what is a photograph, what is still, what is media. So our computer, so, uh, you know, they're using their work uh, to kind of reflect a, sort of sort of a healing point. Um, and they're using sort of these analog images uh, and distressing them to reflect on, uh, you know, their own trauma and pain. So again, this is sort of a healing process that they're working through within photography. Again, very cathartic. So when you have physical prints, um, especially if you're working in C prints, which is the color equivalent to um, like, a, like a dark room print, um, you know, you can really sort of disrupt it and you can disrupt the negatives, you know, with different chemical processes to kind of artifact out your print. So this could be something you may try. Maybe you go get physical prints from, say, uh, Target uh, print stores, which they print from Shutterfly, and, and really kind of try to destroy the print. Now, inkjet prints will not react as well as, say, um, a darkroom print, but uh, this, this might be something you might be interested in. Or you could actually take color film, you could shoot it, you could try to chemically alter the film before or after processing and then scan your negatives. Marked off. So we're looking, um, again, very technical with pixels, with these sort of abstract color forms. So this is, you know, taking landscape photography and looking at it in sort of abstract and digital representations. Uh, we see a lot of landscape photography come out of Arizona, especially from ASU. Uh, and, and, you know, typically, you know, I can only see so much, but seeing this work really kind of makes me think of a different view on it and reflection on it. Uh, you know, they're not arbitrarily adding uh, these gradients to these photographs, but there is a specific reason why these exist. So you could use Photoshop to really kind of play around with the imagery. You could use uh, the content aware fill, uh, the clone brush to really kind of degrade and, and create this new image. So the, this is... Um, Kino Macchiano, again, I'm saying that wrong, and I do apologize, uh, but they are looking at sort of this dichotomy of two sides of beauties and ugliness, vice, virtue, etc., and um, looking at this work um, through this motion, and so they're layering these images, and then the ones I'm showing, um, they're showing a, a goldfish, um, and sort of thinking about the aquarium walls and, you know, how a goldfish only knows what they know. So we had these layered images um, of this kind of nightlife. Again, you could play around with borrowed or original or old imagery, play around within uh, blend modes, uh, different transparencies, adding uh, sort of colored films. You know, again, you're not arbitrarily adding these things, but they're, you're thinking about why are you specifically choosing to show this to your audience? What are you drawn to? So again, again, we're looking at landscapes again, but again, we're looking at darkroom techniques and then shifting with colors. So these sort of blend uh, of these two kind of techniques. Uh, this reminds me of cyanotypes.
There's Sina Blackwood. So they're uh, so they're looking um, at this work about gender and sexuality um, that they had a, within their own personal relationship with the closeted gay man. And so uh, you know, once their partner uh, became uh, comfortable to be out, they kind of looked at. Christina looked at sort of her work as a way to kind of look at uh, playing around with sexuality and, you know, um, within their work. So we have these two, uh, we have a lot of like layering here again. I think layering is a really fun way to play around with abstraction and experimentation rather than making a straight photograph. Um, how can you take it and blend it around, you know, so we have these images that are blend over and uh, playing around with sort of light and color. Castro Franks, so we're looking um, so this is sort of a good shift of, you know, reflecting on, you know, how you're looking through work within yourself and the motions. And again, this work was made in 2020. So thinking about everything that happened in 2020, of course, a lot of stuff is happening in 2022 and so on and so forth. Whenever you're listening to this lecture, I'm for sure every year has something different to it. So again, this is very abstract. We're not having any sort of substantial figures, but photographs, again, that uh, are kind of looking at color and light and not so much as uh, recognizable subject matter within these images. Marilyn Minter, uh, one of my favorites. So they uh, are a video artist, photographer, um, and, and painter. And so she works um, in sort of close-up images of, you know, mostly female bodies, um, uh, looking at uh, sexuality, grotesqueness, glamour, uh, high fashion, uh, you know, these images are, are stunning and her paintings are huge. So uh, in her photographs, you know, she'll look on, you know, adding these colors, looking at parts of the body that, you know, it's, it's got this grotesqueness to it, which is so fun. Um, and her paintings are very similar. And she's done some work with some celebrities as well. Uh, I think she did some stuff with uh, Miley Cyrus recently, which was really cool. But sort of these close-up images, uh, this is like done on like a, a screen, not a screen, like a glass. And so there's this like slime, I guess, to use something that is tangible for me to think of, and this like close-upness, and then the videos are absolutely gorgeous and mesmerizing. So previously she was using um, analog techniques to kind of take her images and sort of create parts and, and replications, but this is uh, her newer work, newer photography work is digitally, uh, you know, it's a bunch of uh, composited images together that look almost seamless to create this sort of one image. Leah Schrager, um, so they work um, in sort of a lot of about sexuality and digital life within the female body. So we think about digital life where TikToks, uh, you know, Instagram filters, Snapchat, you know, with the dog ears and stuff. So they're looking at, um, uh, you know, sexuality uh, a lot within sort of this digital space. And with this work, I really kind of wanted to pull out. So they do digital manipulated impressionistic selfies. So it's taking a photograph and... Uh, 
it's got this like digital artifact. So I think a, this would really complement um, Rembrandt's work in a gallery together. So taking a photograph and sort of taking parts of it and, and, and manipulating it different ways. Um, You know, what is the figure, what is not, what is erased, what is present. Why are these florals added, these lines? Lola Flash, so this is an analog process. So um, they did their work uh, in the height of the AIDS protest. Um, so she took her camera and she took photographs of a lot of the protests, um, the AIDS quilt that uh, was going around um, and sort of part of the uh, queer community and sort of, they took cross processing of color film to really get these different um, images, you know, to really kind of get these contrasts in, but it kind of gives it this really, like they're very pungent, but it's not like directly a negative, um, you know, and you think about the positive and negative and what that connotates within the, you know, we got these opposites and it's sort of what is being highlighted and what is not being highlighted, what's brought to the forefront, what's left in the, the background. So I hope these artists kind of really inspire you to think how you can take color photography and not just make a straight photograph, but what digital image making can be. I really want you to be very conceptual with this process. Think about uh, digital media. Uh, this could be a, a, commenta a commentary on NFTs, which are very popular television, uh, social media. It could just be you're playing with pro like alternate processes to really uh, highlight maybe something that's more personal or something that's more universal. Um, this is gonna be a really fun project. Uh, I'm really excited what, to see what you all come up with.